Hello everyone and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. I'm G, and we have just learned from Mahuyajo and Alexis Leskinen that uh, they are using the Amadea system to try to create true artificial intelligence. And from there, let's just get started. It was thanks to Izaki that I was able to get into the reception held after the ATF was over. They told me there was a dress code, so I went all the way back to my parents' house to get a suit to change into. At first, all that effort paid off, as Izaki introduced me to some of the country's top researchers. Raiken, JAXA, IMSS, etc. But before long, Izaki ran off to suck up to some university professor, and I was left completely abandoned. Who is it? Can't believe you get to go to a fancy party. I ain't a fire, Mr. Fancy Pants. Could have helped too, you know. No way. Don't complain. I'm jealous you get to go to a party. There's lots of hot rich girls, right? Oh yeah! Mostly guys, I think. Lots of older scientists. Wah. I mean, hang in there, man. Is that all you ever think about? My own personal target, Dr. Leskinen, was surrounded by a bunch of famous scientists. It didn't feel like a mere student would be welcome. And so all I did was stand around and eat from the buffet by the wall. To be honest, I couldn't tell if the food was any good or not. Whenever my glass got empty, a smiling waiter was always around to fill it up again, and so I found myself drinking more than I intended. My stomach was already so full it hurt. The whole place felt like it was another world. I'm really not cut out for this. At the exact moment I spoke, I heard a girl next to me say the same thing. Surprise, I looked over at her. Her eyes met. Ow, oh, you. What was a middle school girl doing here? And then a moment later, I realized it was Mahu Hyajo. She was wearing the exact same outfit she'd been wearing during the lecture. A lab coat in a place like this. It's just what the old me would have done. Let me see, you're... Maho was clearly out of place. Why? Because she was still wearing her lab coat. Are you wearing a lab coat? I couldn't help but ask. I, I was sure I'd brought some real clothes. She was sure she had, but she hadn't. And that's why she was standing in the corner, trying not to attract attention. You're the guy who was at the desk this afternoon. I'm Rintaro Okabe. I'm a student at Tokyo Denki University in Professor Izaki's class. I handed her one of the business cards I had thrown together after Izaki told me I needed them. She grabbed one of her own out of, a out of a stack and carelessly put it in my hands. It's fine. No need to be so polite. That was a huge help. My name's pretty rare, isn't it? Huh? Oh. Yeah, you said nobody could read it. I looked at the card and saw that the pronunciation of her name was written in unusually large letters. That was probably because of how people kept screwing it up. It's a common name in Okinawa, though. You're from Okinawa? My great-grandmother and great-grandfather were immigrants. I was born and raised in America. Half. Well, you don't look half Japanese. Quarter Japanese? Nope. My grandma, grandpa, grandma, mom, and dad were all Japanese. My DNA is purely Japanese. Huh. And then the conversation stopped. I'm a terrible conversationalist, honestly. The old me would have gone full Chunibyo and started ranting about conspiracies and magic powers, whether the other person cared or not. But you can't really call that a conversation. I had no idea what to say to somebody I'd never met before. I've been working at becoming a real adult, even buying and studying men's magazines. But none of it really helped. Without anything to talk about, I looked over to Dr. Leskinen. He seemed to be giving a lecture on neurons to a bunch of scientists. I'm sorry about today. Huh? Sorry for what? Oh, for interrupting your lecture. Oh, that. Don't worry about it. If you hadn't spoken up, I probably would have. Can't stand people like that. You sure that would have been a good idea? You heard what the professor said. Scientists should remain calm at all times. I'm not speaking as a scientist right now, so it's fine. You must have really ticked her off because she grabbed a cocktail from a passing waiter and gulped it down. Yeah. My cheeks turned a pretty shade of pink for an instant, but no longer. She must have had a high alcohol tolerance. Hey, you're right, really. Sorry. Criticisms like that, they aren't very nice, but they're true. A lot of our research still has a long way to go. Really? There are a lot of problems we still have to deal with. More than we discussed at the lecture. 
Here's an example. We can write memory data back into the brain, but if the brain can't use it, then it's useless. Memories are there, but you can't get to them. Basically the same as amnesia. Maho spoke, I remembered. Remembered all the lectures and theories that Kurusu had given me when she was making the Time Leap Machine. Um, if I remember right, when people try to access their memories, the signal goes from the frontal lobe to the temporal lobe, right? Yep. Top-down memory search signals. So then... And I started to talk, remembering what Kurusu had told me about her theories as I went. When I used specialized terminology whose meanings I barely remembered, Maho would tell me what they were. And so finally, in the process of writing these memories back to the temporal lobes, uh... If you send the pseudopulse you copied along with them to the front lobes, the memory search signal will function properly, I think. Did you figure that out for yourself? What? Uh, no. Maha looked back at the business card I'd given her. Your major is in brain science. Some, so someone told you this? Or did you read it in a paper? No, that's impossible. She wouldn't have put it into a paper yet. Did I say something wrong? No, that's not it. One of the researchers at the lab said the exact same thing. None of the other staff believed her, but she said she was sure she could prove it. In the end, she left us before she got to the test stage. That's... Should I tell her? Should I tell her about me and Kurisu? In this world line, there's almost no connection between me and Kurisu. What is it? I made up my mind. If I wanted to follow my dreams, I needed to act. Actually, it was Kurisu who told me about this theory. What? What'd you just say? Kurisu Makise told me about it. Kurisu told you? When? Why? When she was over as an exchange student, we became friends and she talked to me about this stuff. Of course, that was a lie. Kurisu and I became friends in the Alpha World line, not this one. But a small lie like this was probably okay. I see. So, Kurisu. Thank you. I mean it. Her words surprised me. That was the one thing I didn't expect to hear. For what? For being her friend. She came to Japan all alone. I mean, I'm sure she would have been bored standing all by herself. All we ever did was fight, though. That sounds like her. She never gave in, did she? Never. She'd argue for hours. She'd tell me all the time about how she was going to give me a lobotomy and rip out my frontal lobe. What? She wouldn't... I could see Kurisu saying that. Right? You need to discipline your researchers better. I'll admit that much. Sorry. Huh? She smiled, or so I thought. And then all of a sudden she started to cry. What's wrong? I didn't have any better ideas, so I grabbed my handkerchief. Huh? Huh? She didn't seem to know why she was crying herself. Neither did I. But I said something during the conversation that set her off. Are you okay? I I'm fine. Sorry. She didn't take my handkerchief. Instead, she took a tissue out of her pocket and wiped her eyes. My brave third Einstein. What? I turned around and saw Dr. Leskinen smiling and quickly striding towards me. He grabbed my hand as he got closer. The handshake was incredibly forceful. And his hands were as big as a bear's paws. No, not just his hands. Standing in front of me, he looked even bigger than he had during the lecture. I'm pretty tall, but he was at least a head taller than me. Um, Professor, I... Uh-oh. It was all so sudden that I couldn't even think of an introduction. Wait, did he just speak in Japanese? Still, I don't approve of you making my assistant cry. Oh, no. This is... Now, Professor, it wasn't his fault. He had nothing to do with it. Maho and I both deny it as much as we could. 
I didn't know why Maha was crying, so I couldn't even come up with any excuses. I just started to panic even more. So basically, um... Kurasu. I was talking with him about Kurasu and I just started crying. Kurasu? You're a friend of Kurasu's. I... Yes. He has Rintaro Okabe. He's a student. Maho introduced me. Dr. Leskinen had a gentle expression on his face as he gave me a slow hug. I felt like I was going to suffocate in his massive arms. Somehow I could tell that it was his way of remembering Kurasu. I see. If that's the case, then Maho... Yes? Why not introduce her to Mr. Okabe? You can't mean Amadeus. It was good luck that brought him he brought him to us here, wasn't it? While we're in Japan, you can have him be a tester. Are you serious? You can't let an outsider... If he's a friend of Kurisu's, he's no outsider, correct? But, uh, sir... What were they talking about? I had no idea, but this was my chance to build a relationship with Dr. Leskinen. He didn't want to blow it. I'd love to help. Nice. He patted me on the shoulders and smiled. It was an innocent smile, like a child's. Okay, and ask Maho for the details. Thanks. Another scientist was calling him, so he wandered away. Maho was shaking her head in disbelief. What's he talking about? Meeting Amadeus? Being a tester? The demonstration of Amadeus we did during the convention used my memories, but... Amadeus also has another researcher's memory saved as data. Another researcher's memories? What did that mean? When I finally figured it out from Dr. Leskin and Maho's conversation, my heart started pounding. You can't mean... Her? Yeah. Tsumakise's memories are stored in Amadeus. They're eight months old, though. Several days pass after the ATF party. Oh, was that a mail notification? Nope! Ten minutes from Ikebukuro via the express train. Then ten minutes by bus from a station called Wako City in Saitama. The office I was looking for was on the second floor of a building right next to Raiken. Global Brain Science Comprehensive Research Organization, Japanese Office Prep Room. That was what the play on the door said. To get in, you needed three types of special keys plus a security card. What is this place? The plan is for brain scientists from all around the world to work together to make the new organization. A lab is leading the way. She led me inside. The office must have been newly rented, whilst the desk was still empty, showing no signs of ever having been used. All right, Ryan. Mysterious accounts have at last appeared in Akihabara, yeah? What? You haven't heard of the ancient urban legends of Akihabara, yeah? I know about a few of them, but the Saketos are new to me. A group of three people sits in the back seat of a certain maid cafe. They appear! Or so they say, yeah? Danger. 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 No one ever knew which maid cafe it was. Intel, yeah, yeah. It's my queen, yeah. Danger. Danger. It, is everything okay? Everything's fine, yeah. They just throw your game in the middle of a raid and kills you all the mobs, yeah. Hang on a second. Danger. There wasn't even a whiteboard, which made the room look even more empty. There wasn't a law of natural light. Maybe the windows were on the north side. The only illumination was from the overhead fluorescent lights. The room felt very cold. It was just the prep room. No one was sitting at any of the desks, but two of them had stuff on them. One of them was a mess filled with notes, calculators, coffee cups, and supplement bottles. That was the one Maho sat down at. Which meant the one that was neatly organized must belong to Dr. Leskinen, right? Where's the professor? Off today. Well, it was Sunday. Are you off today, too? Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to sleep past noon. That's true. When I got to pick her up from her hotel in Wako City, she'd come out of her room half asleep. This was the day that I was to meet Amadeus Kurusu. Maho had gone over the basics of being a tester on the way here. 
Essentially, Amadeus needed sample data for conversations, and they were going to give me an environment where I could talk to it at any time, 24 hours a day. She didn't give me any details beyond that, though. So I'll be able to talk to Amadeus Kurusu 24 hours a day, huh? Is she... Is Kurusu's Amadeus here? Yeah. Maho nodded and gave me a glance. You just said she, didn't you? Huh? Yeah. You two were a lot closer than I thought, weren't you? Maybe my silence was an answer in itself. Maho's response was uncharacteristically hesitant. Okay, may I have a moment of your time? Not today. I see. Sorry to bother you. Really sorry. We can talk about it later. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. And maybe you shouldn't meet her after all. Why? The more... The closer you are to someone, the crueler that system is. I'm okay. Fine. I won't bring it up again, but just remember one thing. Memories are from March, the last time Kurosu did an update. Anything you say about what happened after March, for example, when she was in Japan, she won't remember. That's right, isn't it? And the professor and I have run our program a lot of times between March and today. Each time Kurosu, I mean the Amadeus Kurosu, has created memories the original never had. Stories we've told her, information she's found on the internet, new people she's talked to, things like that. In other words, what you're about to meet isn't Kurosu Makase, your friend. It's one of the problems with the system. Causes a lot of confusion with the people on this side. I mean, us humans. Because you'll think you're talking to the real Kurosu. Don't get reality and fantasy mixed up, I guess. Our brains have trouble keeping up with the fact that our memories aren't stored, aren't shared with them. Memories that aren't shared. Now there's a feeling I knew well. Reading Steiner. It was a power only I possessed, which made my memories different than those of the people around me. Take me to her. Maho gave me a slight nod. Yes, way. She led me to the back of the room. There was a booth separated by a thick partition. To get inside the booth, you need a different card key than the one used to get into the room, as well as a security code. You're pretty strict about security. Industrial spies are our biggest threat these days. She entered the security code and unlocked the door. Go inside. The room was about two and a half meters per side. At one end was a white desk, and above it was a PC with a built-in 30-inch screen monitor. It's just behind me. There was a small sofa that let you sit behind the user and see what was happening on the screen. I sat there. Maho powered on the PC and began to type. Adieri. A second later, the words Amadeus system appeared on screen. I saw her put the ID in. Salieri. Salieri? Salieri and Amadeus, huh? Was there some meaning to that? Come to think of it, in the famous movie Amadeus, there was a character who was spiteful and jealous of Mozart's incredible talent, but who in the bottom of his heart admired him more than anyone else. That character's name was Salieri. Now look at the password. Maho moved her body to hide her hands. I looked away. She finished logging into the system, and a simple bare command prompt appeared on screen. Are you ready? Yeah. Do it. Maho entered several commands at the prompt. Sorry, can't show you this. Well, I wouldn't be able to make any sense of it. Still, you know how it is. She turned off the monitor, and she spun around to face me. I suddenly realized I was clenching my fists. How long had I been doing that? My hands were sweaty, and there was a red spot at the base of my thumb where my nails had dug in. Was I more nervous than I realized? Why is it? Oh, just... starting to get a little scared. There's still time. You can just leave now. You're pretty mean. Really? I'm worried about you. 
and act like it. Seriously, you curse you, you lab girls. For a second, the old joking me was about to come back. I quickly changed the subject. People who spend all their time doing experiments can be so rude. That's a clear case of slander. I can sue you for defamation if I want. Stop, you're scaring me. I know a good lawyer. Want me to introduce you? How about you stop suing me first? You want to talk about a settlement, you're going to need a lot of cash. I'll buy you a Dr. P later. You're so cheap. I hear a small sound from the back of her throat. I guess she was laughing. Normally I'd find that irritating. But strangely, coming from the girl in front of me. Well, she was a grown woman, actually. I didn't. Ahuyajo was very strong-willed, with the prickliness and short temper unique to scientists. She always seemed to be a little upset about something. But maybe she wasn't that bad. Oh, I see. She. Maho. She's a lot like Kurusu. When I first met Kurusu, she was like that. Arrogant, rude, never willing to change her mind. Stubborn, hard-headed, and always ready to confront you with raised eyebrows whenever you said something she didn't like. I truly thought I'd never seen a more unlikable woman. But despite my first impression, on the inside she turned out to be fragile, easily hurt, so kind, and so lovable. What's so funny, Maho? I suddenly heard a girl's voice from the speaker. Oh! I found myself jumping off the sofa. I knew this voice. Couldn't forget it. I could never. Maho turned on the monitor. The girl I'd never forgotten appeared on the screen. The view was based off of her appearance at the brain science lab, because she was wearing a white lab coat. PC's camera turned towards me on its own. Uh, who is this? Maho was introducing me, but I didn't hear anything she was saying. I simply stared, entranced. I wanted to reach out my hands. I wanted to touch her. She, she was right there. Nice to meet you, Intero Okabe. I'm Kurusu Makise. I look forward to working with you. Closed epigraph. All right, Mr. Okabe, try to relax. My voice is a bridge guiding you down to the past. You're going down and down and down, and then you see a gentle colored light. I was dreaming, daydreaming. I was aware that I was lying on a big sofa undergoing counseling. 
tried my best to stay calm and imagine what the psychologist was telling me. What color is the light? Red. Red. I see. The person you care about is standing in the light. Are they your family? No. Then your friend. Or perhaps lover. Lover. No. Not my lover. Not even my friend. And what are they? She and I are... Memories came flooding back into my mind like a geyser. Did you come with me? Oh, did you come with me for a moment? What? My Arishina is not needed. Tell me. I know you use the time link machine. Save my Eri. Go to the beta world line, the world where my Eri doesn't die. Not just for your sake, but for mine as well. Will you remember me? I like to die. I don't want to die. Uh -huh. Mr. Okabe! I killed her. It was me. It was me. Listen to me. I'm going to pat you on the shoulders. When I do, you'll be fully awake. Three, two, one, now! There was a loud sound, and I felt an impact on my shoulders. Her suffering face disappeared instantly, and I could feel my consciousness awakening. Ugh. Stood up off the sofa. I felt dizzy and almost fell over. You all right? Rest a minute. I'll bring you a towel right now. The psychologist left the room. I realized I was soaked in sweat. Air conditioner was working, so I could tell it wasn't from the heat. It was the first time I tried hypnotherapy at a mental health clinic. My body felt strangely heavy. When I got outside, it was night. It was almost December, and the wind was cold. I want some no cream. Mary Sheena asked me, gently. Mary was a high school student and my childhood friend. She'd come with me to counseling today. I told her I didn't need her to, but she left school early to come. All I ever did was make her worry. Around three months ago, my one obsession had been saving her. For me, she had always been someone I had to protect. And now she was worried about me. It was only because of my Eri's recommendation that I had tried counseling. Can I sack Uncle O'Green? Oh, wait, no. Oops. Oops, oops. You sure? If you're wondering about whether to hit Sunpo or Gogo Curry for dinner, I can help you with that. Any more anything more involved, no. Well, they're the only places I eat. Again, I'll handle it myself. You can talk to me about it another time. Thanks. Oops. Can I talk to Amadeus? No. Okay. It's not that bad, they said. I told her a small lie to make her feel better. Actually, they told me I had suffered serious trauma. It stopped the hypnotherapy and given me a course of counseling and drugs. Now they wanted to wait to see the results. Basically, they decided there was nothing to do but to treat my symptoms and wait for it to heal naturally. I couldn't tell if what Maho had shown me yesterday was having an effect. I underwent treatment without telling the psychologist about the time machine or the world lines, or most of the things that had happened. So maybe there was no way for them to make a proper diagnosis. In any event, I decided not to think too much about the results. Hey, Mayuri. 
You haven't eaten yet, right? Wanna go get some food? I'll treat you. Oh, can we go to Akihabara then? You're getting very sad they haven't seen you in forever and they want to meet up. Akihabara, huh? The clinic was in walking distance of my house. Akihabara was much further away. But even so, I couldn't turn down my area's request. Until the events of this summer, I'd gone there almost every day. In fact, I'd practically lived there. Lately, I only went three times a week at the absolute most. And then only to go shopping on the way home from school. We went out into the plaza in front of the station. It was like in Ikebukuro, even though it was only a month until Christmas, there were barely any decorations. I was sure the whole place would be covered in them the minute it was December 1st. Eventually, I was sure to see maids in Santa outfits. Maids in Santa outfits? Passing out flyers in Akihabara, huh? Akihabara could be really weird. Oh, it's Fairy Sunuka! Meow, Kyoma! Okabe, my Harry. Ferris and Nukama must have been waiting. They ran over as soon as they saw us. I missed you, Nya! Ferris and Nya jumped at me without the slightest hesitation. She was a maid, and Ferris wasn't her real name. I knew her real name, but if I didn't call her Ferris at all times, even when she wasn't working, she'd get mad at me. She was wearing the same outfit she always wore. Her work clothes from her job at the maid cafe Mekwin Nyan Nyan. Was May Queen going to switch to Santa outfit soon? S stop it! Everybody's looking at us! I tried to pull Ferris off me, but it wasn't working. Maybe I should just steal the cat ears off her head. Who cares, Nya? All the matters right meow, it's Ferris and Kyoma! I care, and stop calling me Kyoma! Meow, why? I have consigned that name to my dark past. Meow. Ferris looked upset, but I decided to ignore her. Yoma Halloween was part of a past I'd sealed away, and decided to pretend he never existed. He had meddled with the forbidden invention called the Time Machine, and as a result, the systems that ruled the world had punished him. He dashed the hopes of many, lost the life of someone he cared for, his heart had suffered grievous wounds. He must never be awakened again. I didn't need him anymore. Then what should I call you, Nya? Well, Okabe or something. I think Okabe's a cute name, don't you, Ferris? By the way, Ferris was what my Mayuri calls Ferris. She claimed it was easier to pronounce, or something like that. That. Well, if you say so, Mayushi. Still doesn't sound right, though. She looks unsatisfied, but she backed away. Yukiko, it's been a while. Yes. Yukiko smiled happily. He always looks as beautiful as a pretty girl. But he's a guy. He was a classmate of Mayuri's and could often be seen helping at the Yanabayashi Shrine where his family lived. I probably shouldn't call him Rukiko. It's like I told Ferris not to call me Kyoma. He had his own name, Ruka Ishibara. Calling Rukiko Ruka after all this time. That would be really embarrassing. It feels like a very long time. I sometimes go to the lab, but you haven't been there much, have you? No, I haven't. I've been busy with school. And to get ready for ATF, too. Even after that was done, I'd been busy with Maho and Dr. Leskin, and, and then... Amadeus. I hadn't had a chance to rest. But I avoid mentioning that to them. Oh, and I'm in a club now. You joined a club? What kind of club? Yeah, UFOs? You amaze? What do you guys think I am? I guess I hadn't told them then. Mayuri, I'm pretty sure I told her. As the two of them looked at me with wide eyes, I cracked a knowing smile and puffed out my chest. The Tennis Club. What? People around us all turned to stare at Ferris and Ruka. Why the Tennis Club, yeah? Okay, look up, hey, have you ever played tennis? Of course not. I may not look it, but I'm terrible at sports. I'm confident I'd lose to my area at distance running. You're my meow. Well, it's a long story, but... The associate professor who's my teacher at school is the tennis club's advisor, and they asked me to join. That's not long at all, yeah? Well, I'm not done yet. The teacher's done a lot for me, so I decided to stop by. And? And it turns out I have a talent for tennis, 
despite the fact that I'm a beginner, I beat every single one of them. Um, amazing, right? You really are amazing, Okabe. Haha, <laughs> if I had known, I would have been a pro tennis player. You can win Wimbledon. Mm hmm? What's wrong, Ferris? Do you have a headache? I'm not even sure where to begin. That's most obvious play to get new members I've ever heard, yeah. Don't say that. I kind of noticed, but I'm trying to avoid thinking about it. They're all really good people. So you've been busy practicing with your club, then? Hmm? Oh, no. Actually, I barely go. Huh? This is what I'm you doing! Matchmaking parties and stuff. What? Their shouts filled the whole street. Once again, people turned around to stare. It's not that surprising, is it? I'm a normal college kid. But that's true. I'm sorry. But... Luca was fidgeting like he wanted to say something. How can you go after other women when you've got your beautiful Ferris? It's unforgivable, yeah. Don't get the wrong idea, okay? I'm not really interested in girls. In fact, I went along with the rest of the club, but there really wasn't any place for a wannabe normal like myself. There was no way I could keep up with the conversations that the, well, normal normies had. While the other men and women were having fun, I just kind of would sit there. Matchmaking party was a challenge far beyond my capabilities. I wasn't going to tell Ferris and Luca that, though. Oh, that's so nice. Maybe she wants to go to a matchmaking party with Okarine, too. What? Hey, you want to do what? Is she old enough to be interested in that sort of thing? Yes, that's when everybody gets together and has a fun party, right? Evidently not. Hmm, well, it's not wrong, but the nuance is a little different here. We don't have a lab. Of course, the Converse will come. Oh, and Dari and I and Suzu. Oh. Mayuri turned to me with a guilty look. Suzu, huh? Suzuha Mane, also known as John Teeter. Time traveler from the year 2036. A true warrior who was still fighting even as I was trying my best to give up. I'd barely seen her since summer. I was avoiding her. Part of the reason I'd stopped going to the lab was that she spent all of her time there now. Until a month or so ago, just hearing Suzuha's name was enough to cause flashbacks. It was all I could do to endure them. After three months, I could finally stand to hear her name. I didn't think I could keep it together if I met her in person. Of course, it wasn't her fault. I wasn't blaming her. But I didn't want her to blame me. I'd never come out and said it, but when she looked at me with that razor-sharp glint in her eyes, I felt something like guilt. Um, uh, everyone? Hmm? Maybe she's been playing an operation with Daru. Operation? Sounds like something the old me would have done. Yeah, what kind of operation, yeah? Um... Operation Make, Su Make Suzu Smile. Huh? What was Mayuri talking about this out of the blue? No, oh, maybe it wasn't out of the blue. She might have been thinking about it for a long time. So I decided to respond as cheerfully as I could. Tell me about it, Mayuri. Okay. Um, so maybe she thinks that Suzu's normally kind of scary, but she's actually a really nice person. Sometimes when I'm in the lab, I'll start to fall asleep on the sofa, and when I wake up, there'll be a blanket over me. When I asked Suzu about it, she says she has no idea, but... Oh, well, I had a similar experience. My dad once asked me to go shopping for him, and as I was having trouble on the way back, because I had to carry so much. And then Amana came by, and without saying anything, she took some of the bags from me and carried them. Huh. I had no idea. She said that it wasn't a big deal, so I shouldn't tell anybody. Oh, I guess I just did. You see. In the Alpha World Line, she was a cheerful girl who smiled at everyone, and who loved to go mountain biking. But in this World Line, she wasn't the type who smiled a lot. This was partially due to the way she'd grown up. I'd heard about it third-hand from Daru. But because of the universal conscription program that started after World War III broke out, 
She'd been forced to undergo military training ever since she was in middle school. And after that, she joined up with the anti-government forces and gotten caught in a terrible struggle. After that, he said, she'd never really smiled. Oh, I want Susan to really smile. I see. So what's your plan, yeah? The Christmas party. The Christmas party? We all spoke in unison. It's almost Christmas, right? And Susan says she's never been to a Christmas party. Maybe she wants to give her one as a present. There, Sudruka nodded at almost exactly the same time. I mean, yeah. Me too. <laughs> thanks. Okay, will you come too? Huh? Well... No want to? It's not that, it's just... I don't think Suzuha would really want me there. Do you? I was never going back to the past. I still couldn't forget the look on Suzuha's face when I told her that. It was an expression filled with anger and despair. It must have felt like her last, most desperate hope was crumbling away right in front of her eyes. The words she said to me, then, were still sharp thorns lodged in my heart. Zaha doesn't like me, you know? Maybe she doesn't think so. I think she probably regrets the fact that she got mad at you. I think she just can't say it. Really? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Couldn't turn her down after my ear said that. Fine. I'll think about it. Okay. Um, by the way, Okabe. There was a bit of hesitation in Druka's voice. How'd the doctor's appointment go? Evidently, Druka had never heard had heard about my counseling from my Yuri. Maybe he'd wanted to see me because he was worried about how it went. I guess I'm making Druka and Ferris worry too. In this world line, they hadn't joined the lab, but even so, they were still dear friends. I'd never tried hypnotherapy before. It was interesting. Never thought it would work on me, so that was a big surprise. It worked? Perfectly. Huh. I mean, you can yawn one last second. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, wait, nope. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Luca would believe anything you told him. Anyway, there was no point in standing around forever. I was getting hungry, and it was time to find some place to eat. Hey guys, what do you want to eat? My treat. We decided to head toward the Yorobashi. There were a lot of restaurants there, so it was perfect. Way to go, Kyoma! I mean, okay, you're the best, yeah! Thank you. Hey, <laughs> what should I eat? Maybe fried chicken? You see fried chicken? That's all my Yushi ever eats, yeah! I walked behind the three of them, and I thought to myself, what would it be like if Kurusu were here? I tried my hardest for the past few months not to think about her, but was it because of my experience yesterday that I did, yesterday that I did anyway? Expressions and little mannerisms I'd seen yesterday. The voice, the way she'd walked. I remembered. I remembered my conversation with her. Hello, Rintaro Okabe. I'm Kurosu Makise. Nice to meet you. I couldn't respond at all. Something felt slightly off about the way Kurosu moved on the screen. But it was really slight. I'd get used to it soon. More importantly, the voice and the way she spoke were exactly like the real Kurosu. I almost cried. It was all I could do to stop from breaking down. Um, Maho. It's not the middle of the night, is it? Camera on the PC switched from me to Maho. No. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, it isn't. Why? I was wondering if the two of you were sleepy. She's talking about the fact that I didn't respond to her introduction. I was asleep until uh, just a bit ago, but now I'm 100% awake. I see you're as lazy as ever, huh? Don't be rude. Anyway, can I ask a question? Sure. What's up? 
What's your relationship to Orin Okabe here? He's a student who participated in the last UTF seminar. He seemed really interested in the research, so I brought him here. Maho decided not to tell Amadeus that I was a friend of Kurusu's before she died. Why, I wonder. Do you not want Amadeus to find out? Or was I supposed to tell her myself? Huh, he must be pretty impressive if you're saying that. The Kurusu on the screen turned to me and smiled. Um, uh, calm down. So, Kabe, what's your major? Brain science, I assume? It, it's... The words got stuck in my throat. I said, calm down! You know this is just a program. Her words, her appearance, even the conversation she's having with you right now, they're all artificial. But even though I knew that, I still couldn't speak. I had no idea what to say. More than that, the words nice to meet you hit me harder than I thought they would. It wasn't the curse who I'd spent those three weeks with. Uh, who had told me this ahead of time. I thought I understood it, but hearing it for myself hurt more than I imagined. I regretted not taking my anxiety meds, but it was too late now. My heart rate soared and my breathing became irregular. My head was spinning and the corners of my vision were beginning to dim. At some point, my lips had gone totally dry. Is something wrong, Okabe? Kurusu sounded worried. That voice software must be pretty good if it could handle nuances like that. The major is in brain science. He's very interested in our research. Is he? Dr. Laskinen likes him too. At some point I plan to make him my assistant. What? My head snapped up in surprise at Maho's bizarre statement. Me? Maho's assistant? Then go to Victor Condry University. Oh? Don't like the idea? It's not whether I like it or not. Well, it was a joke anyway. Joke? Did you take it seriously? I did not. I wasn't going to tell her that I almost did. I see. But if you study really hard, it might not be a joke after all. Even if it wasn't, I'd rather be Dr. Leskinen's assistant. This is my way of getting back at her. It's harder to be his assistant than you might think. He's really a big kid. As she spoke, she quietly came over next to me and tapped me on the arm a few times. I see. Well, that was it. He's making a joke to try and calm me down. S sorry. Thanks. What are you talking about? Didn't think subtlety was her thing. Maybe I was wrong. Um, Maho, excuse me. Darcy beckoned to Maho from within the screen in a very human manner. Why is it? I'm a little closer toward the speaker. Maho moved her ear close to the speaker. I was just thinking about how weird it was when... Huh? Maho suddenly turned bright red and shouted at the screen. Of course not! Why are you talking about? You don't need to be so embarrassed. I I'm not embarrassed. Stop being weird. You sure? I'm sure. Um, what are you talking about? It was obvious that Kurusu had whispered something to Maho. What'd she say? Maho glanced at me. And for some reason, she blushed and turned away. Ah, I see. From the way Maho was acting and what I knew about Kurusu, there was only one possibility. Goddamn mainstream women! I whispered a name I'd often tease Kurusu with and suddenly felt a lot better. She must have said something stupid like, You two make a good couple, or you finally found a man, huh? But she looked at a boy and girl holding a friendly conversation and immediately assumed they were dating was just like the Kurusu I knew. Sheesh, what a system. You didn't need to be that true to her personality, did it? I chuckled. You think this Kurusu also browses that channel and Maho and the Professor aren't looking too? Nah, knowing her, she's probably commenting. I remember Kurusu once browsed that channel on the Future Gadget Laboratory's computer when she knew nobody else was around. Hey, knock before you come in! Christina, what are you doing when you should be working? Hey, stay back! <laughs> hey, what's with that? Oh, this is terrible, right? Right, Raffle kind of laugh. 
Right now, Christina. Or should I say, at Channeler Kurisu. Don't call me that. I knew it already. Indeed, I've known it for a long time. You reek of that, Channeler. How rude, my perfume isn't that strong. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about your soul's power level. But it's cute how you try to hide it, at Channeler Kurisu. Do not call me that. Your soul's power level, huh? My silly remarks seem to have a much deeper meaning now. Was the girl in front of me now one day going to, as Dr. Leskinen had said, become a real artificial soul? When that happens, what are we supposed to call a soul that still existed in this world after the body was gone? Not dead or alive, but something in between. This wasn't science anymore. It was philosophy, or maybe religion. Enough messing around. Alcabay didn't come here to waste his time with this stuff. The way you're trying to change the subject makes me even more suspicious. I'm going to infect you with a virus. I was kidding, I won't bring it up again. Kurisu quickly bowed her head. I bet back when Kurisu was still alive, she had conversations like this with Maho every day. I'm sure De Dr. Leskinen had a lot of fun watching them. It's actually kind of cute. Sorry about that, Okabe. Wanna try talking to her? Uh, oh. Maho offered me the seat in front of the PC. Kurisu's face was on the monitor right in front of me. When our eyes met, she smiled a little. I didn't know she reacted like this to people when she first met them. But my meeting with Kurisu went about as badly as it possibly could have. I realized that her prickly attitude towards me could have been unusual for her. Ask me whatever you want. I'll answer anything I can. Hmm. Yeah. This wasn't good. I was remembering every moment I'd ever spent with Kurisu. I couldn't think of what to say. Then the words that came out of my mouth were... Is it possible to create a time machine? That's what I had once argued about with Kurisu on another world line. In the end, I'd lost the argument completely. What? Huh? No. Huh? A time machine, you said? Where did this come from? It's just a test. I wanted to see if she was capable of thought experiments. Hmm? Well, Kurisu? See, my conclusion that it's not plot. My conclusion is that it's not possible. But well, we don't know for sure that it's impossible. I guess. What? It wasn't what she said. I'll begin with my conclusion. The very idea of a time machine is idiotic. That's what Kurisu had said in the Alpha World line. I remember that well. I think the very idea of a time machine is idiotic. I remembered our old debate and decided to repeat what Kurisu had said then. It's too early to assume that. You think so? It's true that scientists all around the world have proposed time travel theories. There are 11 major ones and countless minor ones, but... None of them are anything more than hypotheses, and some of them directly contradict one another. Correct. For example, there's a cosmic string theory and a wormhole theory where time travel is possible as a thought experiment, but... No one has a clue where you would go, go to get cosmic strings or exotic matter. In other words, it's not realistic. This was also something Kurisu had told me in the Alpha World line. But the Kurisu on the screen was unmoved. That's probably because scientists haven't discovered something important yet. You think it's possible to create a time machine? You don't know for sure that it's impossible. That's why I said, remember? Yeah, her opinion was slightly different. Was this because I was in the Beta World line? Or perhaps... Hey, Yajo. You know she's made from a copy of the original's memories, right? Of course. Then I'm... I can't think of a good example, but... Is it like identical twins? You can't tell them apart at birth, but as they grow, differences start to form? Or something like that? We're still investigating that, but... If the memories they build up are different, I think that of course they become something different from the original human. The professor agrees with me. You see... It was then that I heard the door on the other side of the partition slam shut. Is that the professor? From the last sound of the footsteps, I'd assume so. I could definitely hear somebody stomping around outside. And then after a heavy knock, the door to the booth flung open. Lintalo! L Lintalo? The, prof 
professor opened his arms wide as he came inside, grabbed my hand and began to wave it around. I didn't realize he was this friendly. He seemed to think he was giving me a handshake, but it felt like I was being worked over by a pro wrestler. Hey, boy, what's up? Huh? Uh, I'm, I'm fine, thanks, and you? Okabe, your English is terrible. Shut up, Christina! Christina? Uh, no, I was so focused on the professor that I used my old nickname for her. It's nothing, don't worry about it. I'm worried about it. Why am I Christina? I told you it's nothing. You're freaking out a lot over nothing. I said shut up, Christina. Karasu? Hmm. Ah. Karasu and Maho both seemed lost in thought. Called her Christina, huh? You too, just drop it. Didn't want any more questions about this. When the professor was here, I decided to ask more about how Amadeus' memories worked. Um, Professor, is it possible for Amadeus' memories to be externally modified? But the professor wasn't listening to my question. He seemed to be frantically searching his pockets for something. Come to think of it, I didn't see that translator device on his ear. He must have been looking for it, which means odds were good he didn't even hear my question. Modifying my memories? It's, theori it's theoretically possible. Kurosu herself answered in the professor's place. For example, it would be possible to make me think that my name was Christina. Memory data isn't like normal data, it's much more complex. I'm aware of no successful attempts to modify it. Even if the attempt succeeded, I would notice it and repair it myself. Keep logs in an area that only I can access. In other words, a secret diary. If there was a discrepancy between my current memories and my diary, there's a very high probability I'd become suspicious. What's more, my memories are backed up at regular intervals. Even if they were altered beyond the point where I could self-repair, I would still be able to restore them. I would lose any memories I had formed between then and the last backup, though. Hmm. I see. Regardless of the topic of discussion, it felt strange. Ma had said before she loaded Kurosu was true. Th uh, that sentence didn't make sense to me. But Ma had said before she loaded Kurosu was true. I was starting to feel like I was chatting with the real Kurosu. The way she wouldn't let you get a word in edgewise when she started talking about science was exactly like the real Kurosu. It's interesting, though. I turned towards Kurosu and spoke. You're able to consider yourself yourself objectively as a machine. From what I see in books and comics, I'd expect you to say, I'm not a machine, I'm human. That's pure nonsense. Even humans speak of themselves as a combination of hardware and software, right? You just call it biology and psychology. What's the difference? I see. She's better with comebacks than anyone I know, isn't she? When she heard this, Kurosu turned toward Maho, her CGI's big and round, but it really was just the camera sensor moving. You know, Maho, this may not be any of my business, but you should watch what you say. You finally got your chance, what if he stops liking you? What? Come on, don't bring that up again! But that's what I find the most interesting right now. That's why I find the most meaningless right now. What if this is the last chance you'll ever get? And the one who needs to learn what to watch what you say. <laughs> Dr. Leskin was clapping his hands together and laughing. I had to chuckle a little, too. Afterward, the three of us, including the professor, talked to Kurusu, discussing technical subjects and making small talk. The next thing I knew, it had been almost an hour. I actually felt a little sad when Maho told me it was time to stop. In just a single hour, the strangest I felt about Amadeus had disappeared, and I felt like I was really talking to Kurusu. And I think that this is a pretty good place to cut it. I am so invested in this. I'm so jazzed to see where this goes. I know where some of it goes, but I I have no idea where this diverges from the Steins Gate anime. And I am so jazzed to see where it goes. But for now, thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Steins Gate Zero. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.